Hi, this is Gilles, the Radio Prepper. If you've been into uh, amateur radio for some time and you like building kits, you probably heard the name Dave Benson. Dave Benson had a company called Small Wonder Labs. And Small Wonder Labs uh, sold kits online, the most well-known being probably the Rockmite. And I've built a few of them. I built a Rockmite 20, 30 and 40 meter models. Uh, the 30 meter model is a, in one of my videos. I also built a uh, 75 meter AM transceiver from him and I built uh, the last Warbler kit which is a PSK31 transceiver. He just happened to have one that one of his customers didn't pay for or something like that and uh, I asked him if he had one <laughs> by any chance and he did. So I built uh, the last Warbler ever. <laughs> uh, I lost it but that's another story. He also had a very, very good kit uh, that uh, was very popular called the SW Plus 20, SW Plus 30 and 40 meter versions. A single band transceiver with a VFO and you can tune the frequency and there is a filter. It's well, there's somewhat a little bit of filtering there. And, uh, but you can adjust the frequency and that's the main point. Uh, big advantage compared to the Rockmite, for instance, with a fixed crystal control frequency. But uh, the SW Plus, uh, until very recently, was no longer available. But uh, a guy named Rick decided to, uh, well, with of course the uh, authorization from Dave Benson, uh, decided to uh, reintroduce it, this kit. And it's from a company called Midway Electronics. And I'll post the uh, website in the description. So the SW Plus 30, this is a 30 meter model, is back and I got one. So I'm going to build it and show it to you guys. I have an awesome case that I'm going to use and it's orange. <laughs> and I uh, really like the color. Safety orange, of course. And I'm going to mount it, I mean, uh, build it now. And put it in the case, drill the case and everything and operate it. Hopefully it's going to work the first time around. chrome bar is there to protect the controls. Looks pretty good, huh? When you build a kit like this, it's good to start with the lowest components. So basically the components that will uh, take the less height on the board. This way you can take a little piece of foam, yeah, you put your components on the board, say uh, little resistors and uh, little uh, capacitors, then you put a piece of foam on top of it, you flip it over, and then you can put it on the table and solder things on it. Then you will move on to the uh, taller components like uh, integrated circuits. And same thing, you put them on, you put your piece of foam, you flip them over and you solder on the other side of the uh, circuit board. And at last you will put on the tallest components like uh, electrolytic capacitors and uh, uh, you know, other things that uh, you know, are just a little bit taller and just hold them and uh, you can use your foam also. <laughs> Unfortunately, I forgot mine, so I don't have any piece of foam here, but um, this seems to be a good quality circuit board. And just the same way I remember it from uh, Dave Benson's kit. So it shouldn't be too much trouble putting it together.
I didn't quite follow the manual because it's, it asks you to uh, do certain steps. Uh, you have blocks of components to install, for instance, here. And, uh, well, basically, because Dave Benson asks you to uh, do some tests in between, like uh, testing the uh, audio part of the circuit and other parts. But uh, I don't like that way of building things. I like to build everything and then test it. Now, it might not be the right way to do it, but what I did is that I installed uh, components of the same value, like uh, capacitors, uh, diodes, and then the uh, integrated circuits. Now I'm going to uh, go on with more capacitors and resistors, but uh, there isn't really a uh, rhyme or reason. I like to have things uh, really uh, explained uh, step by step and in logical manner where uh, you install components because uh, they are the same values or, uh, or they're all resistors or all capacitors and uh, so it's easier that way but when you have to install uh, blocks of components like that it's uh, you know like here it's it's a little bit of a pain you're also finding yourself flipping the pages of the manual quite often to go from uh, block descriptions to the component layout page and the components list uh, which is a bit of pain uh, i took out the uh, components layout page but uh, part of the uh, components list is on the back so following all this uh, it's a lot of uh, page flipping and uh, i think the manual could be organized a little bit more logically the same manual written by hans summers would be awesome although it would probably be a hundred pages long or the same manual written by Steve Weber, which would be the same length, but uh, I think more logical. But uh, you know, who am I to criticize uh, Dave Benson anyway, who's an electronics genius? Yeah, I will have to uh, follow the manual, I guess. Of course, I didn't follow the manual, which doesn't mean I'm suggesting you don't. By the way, a little flashlight like this one is great to read markings on components or find component placements. It is snowing today. <laughs> it's going to be a kit building day. And I still have to uh, finish the uh, ME30 I'm building right now. And I have to box up the MFT40, uh, the QCX. <laughs> and finish up the uh, soda pop so uh, it's, I have a lot of work to do but uh, let's start with the uh, ME30 I completed the board nothing is missing which is great I still have to wind a few toroids but it's a very easy part of building a kit so every time the wire passes through the core counts for one turn so that's two turns and I'll put a third turn in here Oops, and keep on going until I reach 28 turns for this one. It's always good to space the turns equally around the core, otherwise you risk uh, disturbing the Earth's magnetic field and you'd get in trouble. People have different methods to uh, scrape the uh, enamel from the wires. I just use a pair of pliers, but you have to be careful not to cut the wire by mistake. The board is finished. I only had to install one transformer, very easy because it only has a one turn secondary. C1, C30 and C32 are missing from the 30 meter version. Also, capacitor values that are printed on the board do not correspond to the correct values for the 30 meter version because the board was made for 40 meters, so you have to go by the manual. Now I just have to install the potentiometers other connectors, uh, power supply, antenna, and tune the transceiver. I got these batteries, cell phone batteries, 1200 milliamps and only 6 millimeters thick. Now I hope they fit in the case with the height of the board and the components, we'll see. And it looks like it is going to fit. The tallest component here is the uh, power transistor, but maybe I can bend it a little bit or uh, that will barely clear 
and I have a PCB, a circuit board that I'm going to put on top of this between the batteries and the board. Well, I didn't quite finish the ME30. I'm still waiting for some parts for the case, so I decided to make a part two. And I promise I'll make part two as soon as possible. But you know, it's the special time of the year right now, and I have lots of other kits that I, well, three kits that I need to uh, finish and put in cases, do some improvements to my uh, soda pop. So anyway, I have a lot of work on my plate right now. But uh, I wanted to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. And if I don't get to uh, post a video before the end of the year, a Happy New Year. Have a good one.